YouTube Welders, we're back here again with another tutorial video from Amero Arc Welding Academy. This video is gonna be all about TIG welding. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. We really appreciate the support. This video, we're gonna go into the TIG torch, how to set up your TIG torch. We're gonna go into wire feeding. We're gonna go into walking the cup versus dipping technique. We're gonna go into the different nuances of TIG welding and how to get all set up. Let's start with your TIG torch, right? When you first order a tick torch you order this tick torch it's kind of plain bare bones all right so we go into the bare bones of the of the tick torch you have your collet you have your collet body all right you have your your straight cup which will pretty much this is a set together okay now it just depends on the application Let's say if you're welding little 12 gauge steel, 1 8 thin steel, stainless steel, or you may be welding with aluminum, you may use a, a straight collet. It's all personal preference. Every one of these selections is all personal preference, right? Most welders, they like a gas lens. The gas lens gives you much more gas coverage, all right? So it gives you more like a balloon coverage over that weld. All right, so with your gas lens, you have a gas cup. These cups come in different sizes, all right? As you can see a number eight, all right? The, as the numbers change, the orifice change, right? So let's say this is also a gas lens. This has a number four. You, if you notice, the orifice is, is much smaller on this gas lens, all right? Now you could go into my favorite. You could go into a jumbo lens, all right? A jumbo, this is a jumbo gas lens, which requires a jumbo cup. This is one of my favorite cups to use and I'll explain that later, all right? So when I first get my TIG torch, let's say if we go with this straight cup, right? This is a collet body. This is a collet. You insert the collet in the collet body. You screw this on the front side of the torch. Now you have to have a back cap. These back caps come in different sizes, as you can see. The back caps come in a medium, a longer back cap, and a button. Now the big difference with this is it just depends on uh, the, the size of the tungsten you're using. So let's say if you're using a full tungsten, fresh out the box, you just ordered your tungsten from Amera Arc Welding Academy, um, you use a full tungsten out the box, you're gonna need to fill up this back cap. Now how this works is you loosen the back cap, you insert the tungsten, that collet that's inside it bites down with the forward pressure. So the forward pressure from the back cap bites down on the tungsten, and now it makes it tight where you can't move it. You, you choose your desired cup. We're gonna go with the seven cup. And now you're set up and ready to weld, right? You loosen the cap, now you actually go, you choose your desired length. Now when it comes down to tungsten stick out, right? This is also personal preference. I'm gonna say that on average, right? Like say we get a piece of steel, right? On average, if you stick the tungsten out too far, you tend to dip a lot, right? You tend to stick. If you, t if you stick the tungsten out too short, Say if you have the tungsten really short, then now you cannot see what you're welding. You have your fill of metal, you can't see what you're doing, all right? I personally prefer a tungsten stick out of about three eighths of an inch, right? Three eighths of an inch, right? Now, not, not long enough to actually stick but long enough where we can see what we're doing, we can see the, 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 the material uh, melting, okay? And we're not gonna stick in the hot molten puddle, right? Now, I'm going to go into why, why my personal preference is a 
gas lens versus a short cup, okay? My personal preference is a gas lens over a cup because when you have more of a straight cup, you tend to have uh, less gas coverage, okay? And also, I like a much larger cup. A much larger cup, you have to manipulate the cup a lot less, a lot less. So when you look down here, right, let's say we have a half inch, right? Say if we have a half inch, I'm gonna put this straight cup back on. Now if you have to walk this a half inch, you have to roll much more, all right? It requires you to roll much more, a little more wrist movement, and back and forth, all right? So now, if you look at, let's say this jumbo lens, you look at a half inch, right? A half inch on this, on this smaller diameter cup is almost, you take the smaller diameter cup, let's measure a half inch. A half inch on the smaller diameter cup is pretty much almost like the whole cup. So now you have to roll the whole cup size in order to get from one line over to another. Let's say if you go to a jumbo lens, right? So we take this apart and we're gonna put on our jumbo lens, all right? Mind you, these, these collets and collet bodies come in different sizes. So, because I'm using a 1 8 tungsten, I have to use a 1 8 collet, and I need a 1 8 collet body. But we're gonna put the straight, straight lens to the side for now. Let's go to one of my favorite, which is a jumbo gas lens, right? We have a jumbo gas lens, it's a 1 8 in, in diameter. The opening is a 1 8 in di diameter. We're gonna use our 1 8 collet. We're gonna assemble this whole thing together. Right, hold on, let's put on our um, transition piece. We put on our transition piece. This is by far my favorite cup to use, right? I'm typically always using a number eight gas lens or I will use a number 10 jumbo cup, right? This depends on the application. I have my stick out, but check this out here. A half inch on a jumbo gas lens is only that wide, so which it requires much less of the cup to roll. So now once we get to welding, I don't have to manipulate or turn my wrist as much, all right, in order to go from side to side. All right, now let's get into feeding techniques, all right? So now when it comes down to feeding, typically I hold my filler wire between my point and finger, okay? Sometime and my ring finger, right? Or my point and finger and, and my middle finger. And I typically feed with my thumb. So now I grab my thumb back, I push, okay? So you hold it there, you push, you push. So as you're welding, you always feeding wire in. You're feeding wire in, feeding wire in. Now, this takes a lot of practice. So sometime when you're home, you're not doing anything, you're looking to learn how to feed wire, 
while you're watching television or whatever you're doing in the house, it's a good idea to take this and practice feeding wire, okay? Because especially, let's say, if you're back feeding a root, if you are, let's say, welding something, you don't want to continue to stop, have those start and stops in your weld. So what you'll do is you pretty much feed the wire like this the whole entire time. Now, you come down to, roll, to walk in a cup. Walk in a cup technique, okay? It's a roll and a pivot. So we roll and pivot. Roll, pivot, roll, pivot, roll, pivot, roll, pivot, and we'll put this all together, all right? Roll, pivot. So you roll, pivot to the right. I roll, pivot to the left, all right? And when I say pivot, my, my wrist my wrist is turning, so I'm turning my wrist, and then I roll, I pivot to the left. Roll to the right, now I'm pivoting away from me. I roll, now I'm pivoting my arm closer to me, and now we put it together. The problem with new welders, they tend to lift the tungsten, all right? Try to have the tungsten in a sweeping formation. So it's sweeping across the material, sweeping. Okay, sweeping across the material. We use this uh, old uh, torch, right? So you take an old torch, if you have an old torch, or you have a, uh, a torch that's, that's we actually use this for, because we're a training facility, we use this for example, right? So that students can actually get acclimated to walking the cup, right? So we have them practice, it's called dry runs. We have them practice dry runs before we actually have them implement this and start walking the cup. So here's a good idea to practice at home, okay? All right, we're gonna go through a, a walking cup technique. Let's get suited up and we'll be right back. So we're about to show our walk in the cup technique, right? The key to walk in the cup um, is to keep this torch nice and loose in your hand. So here's a good piece of advice, right? The loose, the, 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 the less tension you have on this cup, the more, the smoother this cup will kind of walk across the steel, all right? Now, a good piece of advice, if you tend to choke up on the, on the torch a lot, uh, hold it with two hands, two, three fingers, right? Loosen up your pinky, all right? And walk the cup like this, all right? But keep it nice and loose in your hand. Some, some experienced welders, they may really just hold this torch with uh, three fingers right here, all right? You just hold it nice and loose in your hand and now you just walk the cup across the steel, all right? Let's get started. So now we're gonna strike up. We get our puddle established. Get the puddle nice and wet. Now we introduce the rod. Now it comes down to introducing the rod. Now we walk our cup. The trick is to keep the TIG torch very light in your hand. And again, that tungsten is sweeping. Do not pick it up. And what we're doing is, we're watching that puddle wash from edge to edge. We're not doing anything with the rod. I'm just holding it still because we're welding in a flat position. Back and forth. It's a roll and pivot. Roll, pivot. This is a walking the cup technique. This is mainly used on flat surfaces. Now we're gonna go into a, our freehanding technique, all right? Um, again, it's always a good idea to know how to freehand because 
on, on most applications, the only time you'll really be able to walk the cup is if you're welding pipe or if you're on a long flat surface, all right? If you're welding something with a lot of obstacles in the way and you have to kind of go up and down and around, you're gonna pretty much use a freehand technique, all right? So now when we're using our freehand technique, all I'm doing is I'm holding this torch like a, kind of like a pen in, in a way, right? I'm holding this torch like a pen and I'm just going back and forth. Just going back and forth. I'm replicating the same movement as walking the cup, all right? I have a, a, a nice little 30 degree angle, all right? And I'm gonna walk over this filler wire and I'm just gonna go back and forth like this. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, all right? You have a lot more control with freehand versus walking a cup. So, let's get started. Now I'm gonna show you a freehand technique, which typically is the same thing. Again, you hold the torch like a pencil and we're just going back and forth. Now this is a freehand technique. If you notice, I'm still replicating the same movement as walking the cup. much easier to apply. The reason why you must know a freehand technique opposed with a uh, alongside walking a cup is because not in every application will you be able to walk a cup. Walking a cup really, it, it only applies to a flat surface. I think walking a cup shows a little more consistency But in going around corners, tight spaces, a freehand technique is pretty much the way to go. All right guys, I hope you guys got something out this video. If you liked our video, please like and subscribe, thumbs up, and we'll see you on the next one.